Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Please invite your friends if they care for the topic. Our topic today is different. You know, we are taking break from uh, the normal average topic we speak of every day. Uh, you know, one of you he spoke to me and he have a problem. And I hope I was able to help this person and his problem. But I noticed that this is something really very common between people. Many people, they suffer from many issues in their life because simply they are unable uh, to observe, to understand uh, people around them. You know, you get into trouble sometimes because you don't understand or you misunderstand. Uh, And this person was asking me how I can help. You know, it's very hard to help somebody if you are next, not next to him. Which means you yourself observing what he is speaking about or what he is facing or what is really the issue. Because sometimes a person, he can describe his problem but, you know, in the same time, his description, it might be wrong. He don't mean to make it wrong. But this is the way he see it, not the way it is sometimes. It's like, you know, two people are fighting, like a married man with his wife. Uh, if you speak to each one of them, each one of them is right. But it's impossible that both of them they are right, you know, supposedly. But... Because each one of them he think or she think is right and they don't come to an agreement, then we will have the problem. So how we understand a person who agree or disagree with us? How we understand a person who we try to come with a conclusion about what he want, what she want? You know, life is full of uh, decision making. You make decision every day. Um, meeting people at work, friends, um, church, uh, all kind of decisions. And decisions can be sometimes very, uh, very wrong, and they can be costly. And later, if you try to fix them, maybe sometime it's impossible to fix. Uh, so when we speak about the mind, understanding the mind uh, you know there's many people they speak about this issue and they start bringing philosophy and you know and they make it more complicated uh, like if you listen to them you will get more confused from before so they didn't it's not helping so you know for me I see that understanding the mind is first a person who understand his own mind before he can understand someone else's mind. So you need to ask yourself, do you even understand who you are? What do you want? What is your target in life? What do you want when you meet friends? What do you want from them when you see them? Uh, what is the purpose of your relationship with them? Uh, why you want to get married? Why you want to get divorced? What is, it, what, is, uh, what is in your mind? And how to understand your mind? What people want to do they wanted to understand others when they don't want to go and deep dive inside their own mind, which can be full of like dark areas. You know, some people like uh, many, they try to avoid dark area or dark memory in their brain. Like, let us say you have something happen, something wrong happened to you when you were a child. You've been abused or something. Or you saw, or you grow in an abusing family. Uh, or you are a person who feel like his parents treated him unjustly. And it can happen. You know, some parents, they treat a child differently from others. So the way you grow, and things you experience since you are a child is where we go back in order to understand your mind. 
You see, today you are an adult, but it not, did not happen that you are born yesterday and you are an adult today. Adult is, a, is like a tree, have many circles inside it. You know, if you go, uh, if we go, let me search for a picture of a tree. I'm sure you know what I'm, you know what what I meant, and I hope my, uh, you know, simple uh, uh, English. I'm not skilled. Uh, English is not my first language, but I hope I'm able to uh, explain to you. So, if we go to uh, find an image of a tree trunk, you will find that there is many circles. In the trunk let us let me bring this picture here or let us take a nice screenshot on it maybe that's really better give me a second and i'm trying to make things simple not complicated and if anything I said uh, make you sad or feel bad, uh, don't you know? I mean, don't uh, don't leave. I think this is good because that means I touch something. You know, and you better face it. So this is a tree. Let me wait for you on the screen. This is a tree trunk. And you will notice that there is uh, an inner a circle. There is like hundreds and hundreds of circles. Those circles they present in a tree aging. But, you know, when we ask people about age, you know, what, what we are trying to really to ask, what exactly? Uh, I can ask a person about his age, like today in the comment section, if you saw, assuming that they are teenage, but maybe maybe they are 60, maybe they are 70, maybe they are 50, I don't know. But I assume that they are teenage by the way they think and the way they lay off their answers. So the aging we are talking about is how you grow an experience in life and how this experience is going to affect you later when you are a growing man or a woman. Inside you, there is many circles like this. And they have colors. And they have wounds. And there is cut. And there is cracks. And each one of those wounds or cracks, they cause pain in certain time in your life, but they will stay with you for a long time, maybe. Maybe sometime we can bury them and we put them in the dark spot, as we said, like I don't want to remember that. But sometime they come back and they force themselves on us. So when you have a conversation with someone else, you think you are, you know, you are speaking to a person. Oh, he is like I say, you are talking to someone or she or he, 22, 25, 30, 40, 50. Uh, you know, uh, uh, he have an engineering degree. She have a, she is a doctor. This person is a pharmacist. This guy is a taxi driver. This guy, he don't have high school. People have different education. And we will go back to that, that issue later. But there is one spot we forget, that everyone is coming from different childhood. Every one of them, you have totally different experience. It can be painful, it can be joyful, it can be horrible. And based on his experience, he will have his own mind 
and the circles in his inside his mind and the wounds so sometimes you speak to a person and you did not say anything of is offending offending or offensive but he got offended badly but you don't understand why because there is something inside this person you do not know this person he went something have to do in what you just mentioned even though we might think that there is no way if you notice sometime I say that we should uh, respect our parents and right away you will see somebody in the comments say CP I have a parents they were horrible to me that make like a trigger inside their brain because he's asking me to respect my parents do you know even what my parents did to me do you, do you have an idea so this person he will be angry for me I'm speaking about normal life normal things parents are wonderful parents are the people who love you parents are people who care for you but there is exceptions there is parents who are criminals abusive sick they don't even deserve to have children so you might think in your mind that when you speak to a person you understand him very well or you understand her very well why because you know what she study or what he study or you know what their work you don't know the, you know their education uh, and supposedly like you know I asked them a question like you know when people meet what do you do for a living oh okay do you have it what, what you study where do you study oh I study in etc university oh okay and uh, 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 you know like some questions and then we start asking the person about the music like if a if a woman she have an interest of a guy or the guy have an interest of a woman so they start like opening a very silly conversation like what kind of a music you like what kind of colors you like uh, and supposedly those details will make you understand the mind but in fact those things have nothing to do with the mind because the answers can be really not truthful you know a person who like to get the attention of someone and this one don't like uh, let us say certain kind of music he will not tell you I like the music which you don't like he is there just to catch you you know to make you uh, have a relationship with him or with her so people lie in the same time this is why understanding the mind of somebody else is extremely difficult but there is always a way to understand the mind of somebody which is very effective and this is what I wanted today uh, to share with you somebody saying Jesus did nothing to as told in Hebrew Torah the Messiah do but the Christianity and Islam both consider him God the prophet my friend we have a topic and this is here an example of a, of a mind of a person just let, let me give you an example You go to a classroom about chemi chemistry and then suddenly a person in the class he asked the teacher a question about ketchup thinking that ketchup have to do with chemistry like aren't you mixing things together so there is some people they have something in their mind and they cannot control themselves they don't have a break they have to let it go and this is what we call it maturity you know like how mature I am I'm not trying to like hurt your feeling but can you think about what you just posted for a second do you see what we are talking do you see the topic do you see the title Lord have mercy always there is people don't even listen to you how you can even communicate with those people if communication never been established 
And there's people who don't even want to listen. No problem, my friend. I'm just telling you, like, just before you make a question, and this is a lesson for you, before you, uh, before you, you throw a stone somewhere, ask yourself a question. Is this a question? Is it in the right place in the right time? If it's not, then don't do it. Because you can do the same in a social life you have with your family, with your wife, children, and you will, not, you will not look good. So how we understand the mind of somebody when this mind of a human being is very complicated? And sometimes even we have difficulty to understand our mind. There's many things can tell you about a person without asking questions. Usually when you ask questions, you sound like a detective. And the second you sound like a detective, the person you are asking him a question, he go into defense, naturally. It's like, you know, you are at home and then somebody walking around your house, looking at your house, even, even though he's in the street, but then you go into defense and like what he's doing, what is wrong with him, why he's here, what he's looking at. But legally, the guy is fine. I mean, he's in the street, but you are suspicious. You go to defense. So yourself, your name, your status, your personality will go into defense the second a person start asking you a question. So to understand a person, we should not ask questions, which is going to be weird because somebody will say to you, how in the world you want to understand a person? You want to understand his mind, but you don't want to ask him questions. Well, if you ask him questions, there's one of two options. Either he will be so honest with you and give you the answer, or he will be not. And then you'll get more confused because you think this is the correct answer. And usually, when people are not comfortable with you, they will not give the correct answer. So how we can find out what is the correct answer and what is the wrong answer? Human being by nature, when he's relaxed, when he trusts, when he feels comfortable, he open himself. He lose some of his security. He lose the locks of some doors. As long as he think as long as he think that you are a person he can trust and he can share with you, he or she, they will. But the questioning is not the right solution. Especially sometime, even if a person is being truthful with you, his answer can be not right. As I said, there are things happening in the childhood affect that person. His answer today have to be maybe in touch with something happened to him previously. So you don't want to investigate a person. You want to know a person. And in order to know the person, you have to establish trust. Comfort zone. You know, when a, when a person, he have, let us say, uh, some kind of depression or, I don't want to use the word mental issue because a lot of people have mental issues. Mental issue is something normal, actually. Many, too many people, you know, uh, face stress and, and this is a mental issue, but doesn't mean you are crazy. When they go to someone, he call him a shrink. They start telling stories nobody heard of before. They start sharing things. Nobody, nobody, even their family do not know about it. Why they do that? 
because in this place they knew this person he have an oath under law and he might even lose his license if he leak any of the things you say and maybe he could go to jail so here you have your comfort zone so suddenly like you have now you have a room you lay down and you have a person his job is to listen his, this is his job and not to judge you he is not a judge he is just a listener and because you have a positive idea about this person that positive idea release the security doors you open you tell you share But those things, it's very hard for a human being to do in front of other human being, even if someone close to you. In fact, people who they are so close to you sometimes are the last one to know you. Because you are afraid to lose them, you are afraid they will judge you, you are afraid they will label you, you are afraid of many things. So you try to hide from the most close per person to you what you think is going to be not right to share and then we have to say okay now that's is really getting more complicated so you might be married to a man but this man he never shared with you anything about his his inner or a woman so how we will know you know life is like uh, when you dig in the ground and you have a water well and you send down like a cradle with a rope and you grab the water when you grab the water from the well you are hoping that there is more water and as long as you are hoping there's more water then you are not worried about the water there's always more water to come but there is some people inside them there is no water they are totally dry and you have an expectation of water you have an expectation of a positive person because they look positive they dress positive they look happy they sound laughing you might sit with a person he is laughing like crazy but he is the most sad person ever you met and in fact he laughs because he want to cover his pain he don't want to remember that's why many they go into drugs and drinking and etc crazy stuff it just to kill the bad in their life and they end dead themselves anyway so to understand a person is not by taking an opinion like you know the bible says a fool take no pleasure in understanding but only in expression or expressing his opinion he will not hesitate to express an opinion but this opinion far away from the truth far away from understanding far away from reality for he was a fool and here there's other issue what if you are a person who like to share so the person in front of you he will understand you that will work if the person in front of you is not a fool because let us say one of you have a, have a difficult story in his life and you decide to share this story with someone because you thought that's the good thing to do to be honest let us say and then right away this fool he will throw a rock on you he will give you his opinion and he will take a pleasure of it but in the bad way in the negative way he is not enjoying it as uh, helping you. 
he is enjoying it as judging you, cursing you, calling your names. Inside the human being, there's a lot of issues. There's anger. There's knowledge. There's faith. There's disbelief. There is endless things. There's temptation. There's desire. Desire to be rich. Desire to be loved. Desire to be with somebody. Always there is something missing in your life and that makes you feel sad. And you think always that you are the only one who is suffering from this issue. You think that everybody around you is lucky. You look around, you look, oh, this guy is uh, happy. This guy, etc. This guy, but this is your assumption. This is your opinion. But reality can be totally different. When a wise man, he unfold his words, he give light. When a foolish man unfold his words, he can bring destruction. So the order, you know, to understand a person, I need to come to a conclusion first. Is he or she a wise person? If not, especially if he, you know, if the person is not like a, a must to deal with, like he's not just a family member. If it's a family member, what you can do? I mean, that's it. It's too late. You have to deal with it. And then when you deal with it, you have like to bend things, you know, like this frame doesn't fit in this window. So we have to bend it and make it fit. But if a person is not part of your life, Always examine the wisdom associating with the foolish ones will never take you anywhere. You can't understand their mind because they don't have any. It hurt them even to, to think. The word mind does not even exist there. So if I want to understand the mind of somebody, the first question I will ask, do he even have a mind? Or he's just like a duck, say walk walk, with no meaning. Conversation with this person is useless. No wisdom, no heart of wisdom. I cannot understand the mind of somebody is a fool, and nobody in the world can understand a fool. And it's going to be a foolish idea if you think you can examine such a fool. Like sometimes you ask yourself, why this foolish person said such a foolish thing, foolish thing? Don't he know that people will laugh at him? But he's a fool. <laughs> you are questioning a fool, why he being a fool? So, in order to understand the mind of somebody, we have to examine first how much wise, how much knowledge he have, how much his soul is relaxed, because, because there, is, there is a bad spirit. There's people that have a really bad spirit. You know, when you go, uh, you know, I met uh, many kinds of people, like once I was in the train, and... Uh, uh, the girl next to me, she have like 10 rings in his, her nose and one ring in her uh, ear. And then she have a chain coming from her ear to her nose. Uh, and she said to me, ah, you are a Christian. <laughs> you know, uh, I said, yeah. Are you okay with that? She said, not really. <laughs> not really. I said, and I'm very relaxed, I said, glad to know. She got more upset, you know. But I'm not going to argue with such a fool, you know. But I said to myself, let me see, maybe I can help this person. Maybe there's a hope. 
Maybe there's a light somewhere. I'm not going to give up. So she said, the Christians, they are not good people. And I said, exactly. That's why I chose to be a Christian. She said, ah, you choose to be bad. I said, exactly. I like to be bad. Is that a problem for you? She said, yeah. I said, well, what do you believe then? I said, I believe that everybody has the freedom to choose whatever he like. I said, well, I choose to be bad. Look like you don't believe in what you believe. <laughs> and you should see her face. You know, she felt like, like, a, like, a, like a rabbit or something. A second ago, she just told me, I believe everybody has the freedom to believe in what he like to be. And then I said, well, I choose to be bad. Look like you don't believe in what you say. And then she stopped talking. Totally, you know. And I was hoping that she will say more stupid things so I can shower her nicely, kindly. But this is telling you how you have to be, to be wise when somebody is trying to throw some ice on you or uh, looking for a fight, you know. Uh, for sure, I'm not going to do a physical fight, with, especially if she's a female. And even if it's a male, what, what fight for? Uh, you have always to listen and listen carefully for what people say to you. A person who have no ears, he will never understand. I am assuming that this girl, she grew up in a society, maybe San Francisco or somewhere, where they taught her in school like Berkeley or, you know, all these mad, silly schools, that Christians are bad, the crusade, they are criminals, you know. Yeah, they have their ideas. This is what they taught them. I don't blame her. This is what they learn in schools. They bash us everywhere. And you might meet with such people always, like this. Once I was in Romania, and a person from Italy, he said, where are you from? I was waiting for the bus. I said, from USA. He said, ah, oh, Trump. At that time, Trump was the president. Man, this Trump is racist. I said, why? He said, he want to close the border. I said, if I go to your country without visa, what do you do to me? He said, you have to get a visa. I said, okay, I don't have a visa. What do you do to me? He said, kick you out. I said, well, he, this is what he did. How that make him racist? People are silly. Nobody want to ask. Nobody want to know. Nobody want to search. They, as the Bible says, a foolish man unfold his foolishness. He take no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. And every day in life, we are going to meet such kind of people. So in order to waste my time trying to understand the mind, first I want to understand how foolish and how wise the person is. I have to come to a conclusion that this person is wise, he have knowledge, he listen, he comprehend, he or she, and then we can think about understanding his mind. Before that point, there's no point. Always, always in life, we will meet those kind of people. And even some of you may be uh, married to somebody is like that. Foolish, silly, don't want to listen, fast to judge, and sometimes even fast to act without thinking. So we have to think about who we associate with and why it's important to know their mind by knowing first if they are wise, if they are knowledgeable, if they are people who listen, 
if there are people who they can comprehend, if there are people who, even if you are wrong, even when you are wrong, they will listen to you so they can give you their take in your wrong. And maybe they can help you. Because not always I am the one is right. I might be the wrong one. But even in that moment, associating with a wise person can be helpful because he will give you his take and he will give you his response, but a wise response. Sometimes a person who is educated, smart, he might give you a wrong response. That's fine, but still it's going to be smart respond. Smart on the value of discussion. And the value of exchanging knowledge. And this is what will happen to you. You will find a dead end. If you associate with person, he cannot listen to you. And you cannot listen to her or to him. And there's no communication. Maybe because each one of you is coming from different galaxy, which mean one if one is so smart, one is so foolish. Or one is so educated, someone and the other one is so uneducated. When we mention education, <clears throat> Education does not mean a degree. <coughs> Many people think that education, if somebody is an engineer or a doctor or a degree, you know, you go to school, university. And for sure, going to school will change you. But education is how much knowledge you earn from your own study. Because in school, they teach you only what is in contact of the subject. Like an engineer, they don't teach you how to be social. They teach you how to build a bridge or a dam or a building. A doctor, they teach you how to work as a doctor. So education is have nothing to do with degrees. Degrees can increase your education especially in the first few years of your life, because they give you many subjects. But some countries, even their education is very silly, like what I noticed in the USA. They are even giving wrong education to children. So education and degree, wrongly, many people think they are connected. The truth is, education is about how much you read and how much you comprehend, and how much you understand and how much is useful because I can educate myself about things have nothing to do with anything useful nothing so if I spend my time reading books and those books can be useful in my social life in my family life learning from other experience even sometimes the books, they can be wrong. They can be wrong. Still reading them can be useful. Because now you understand the wrong. And you laugh at it. So we read the book of a foolish writer, a wise writer, and then we have to be the judge on what we take and what we throw away. In order to understand uh, or to able to be making a conclusion about a person, because this is what we are trying to say, understanding the mind in order to come to a conclusion, how we deal with this person, how we speak to, how we listen to, how we live with, whatever, is always to try to find out his life, how his life is. As an example, if I go to the house of somebody and his house is not organized, it doesn't mean that he is a bad person. His house is not organized. Like you might find books here, books there, 
close here. He is not organized in his house. But this person might be a genius. He might be so smart. He might be super intelligent. So I'm not going to judge him or her by certain things. I'm going to judge them by the knowledge they have, how smart their answers, how helpful they are to others, how good they are with their family, how they treat others. To understand the mind is not about asking questions. It's about studying the lifeline. Isn't it the Bible says, isn't it the Lord said, from their, from their fruits, you shall know them? There's appearance fruits and there's hiding fruits. There's many people who do good things, but they never speak of it. You do not know what they did. It's hidden. Try to find out their fruits. The known and most important, the unknown. And this is the only way to understand the mind of a person. Because his mind and his fruits is always connected. If a person, he is a cheap to help his mother who is sick and she is poor. I know now his mind. He is selfish. He is sick. He is careless. He has no heart. I do not need to ask questions. If a person he treat the one who gave her life to him until he grow and become a man, he treat her like a piece of garbage, how he will treat you later? You can understand the mind of a person without asking questions. Look at the fruits. And don't ask about it. Search for it. Try to find out yourself. You know, if we go back to the picture of the tree, this tree which has a lot of cracks, and dark spot, white spots, all kind of history. The history is written there. But there's more important history was on the branches is the fruits but the fruit is coming from here so if I can say that this is the mind this is your mind or my mind located here If the tree is getting enough supplement, healthy supplement, in the inner, there's a fruit is going to come out. Good fruits, a lot of fruits. If the inner is not getting the good supplement, nutrition, water, in the case of a human being, love, actually even, I believe, trees, they can feel love. I don't want to sound like, uh, you know, those hippie, but I mean, trees is, tree is, a, is, a, is a creation of God. It can die. It can flourish. It looks sad. It might look happy. Maybe not literally, but you can feel that the tree is not doing good. And this is exactly you or he or she. If you're getting the nourishment inside you, and this is your mind, your mind is not poisoned. Your mind is not under the influence of the evil ones. If you have a mind, which is getting the nourishment from the real sources, then your mind will be healthy and your cracks will be less. 
and the dark spots will be less. But we will have all of us. We will have dark spots. We will have wounds. We will have pain. And actually, pain is one of the reasons you enjoy happiness. Why? Because you will not know what happiness is unless you get to be sad one day. You do not know the difference. I do not know the difference between sugar and salt unless I taste both. I do not know the difference between darkness and light unless I see both. If I am blind, or well, both are the same, it's just a word for me. I don't see the darkness because I cannot see. Even you might say to me, but he's blind, he's in darkness. No, he never saw the darkness. He never saw the light. So always we need to look at the fruits and where we get our fruits from, which means our protein, our healthy sources. If we get it from a TV station, if we get it from a TV host, a radio, even a YouTuber, and I am in YouTube, if you get that from me, you're wrong. There is a real source for things can really be helpful to your life. You will notice that all the people who they are struggling, they are dry and they have no nutrition coming in their inner. Their heart is so dry. Some are even that it's almost dead. Some, they decide even to cause their heart to die. So your heart is here. And there is a big crack going inside it. Breaking the source, leaking, killing you. then your fruits will be unable to be established. And if you have a fruit, they will be bad, uneatable. Always judge not a person, judge the fruits. For the fruits will tell you, not the person appearance, will tell you what is the inner of the person. How good, how bad. How happy, how sad, how smart, how foolish. Don't look for the appearance. Many, they look happy. Many, they dress nicely, they put perfume, but they are, they have a lot of worms. It's like, The termite eating the wood from inside and outside it looks fine but the second you try to push it or touch it your finger will go through the wood because those termites they focus in the inner they eat from inside not from outside you when you try to judge or to try to find and understand the mind of person you try to do the opposite of the termite. You try to focus in the outside. And the inner, you might say it's impossible to go there. I say it's so easy. This is why the Bible is our guide. And this is why the Lord, the Messiah, is the wise manual we should use in our life to understand each other. Evil is true, is exist. And the only way to understand it is to look at the fruit. 
somebody saying, but what if the tree is always sick and doesn't heal and the fruit are no good? They will be, they will never change. Well, I agree. In nature, there is a point of no return. In nature, there is a point of no return, which means, that's it, as you said. The tree is sick. The tree cannot heal. The tree is dying, almost dead. How we can fix that? This is for a tree, but for you as a human, you can always seek help from the one who can help. And that is not a human, for this is above a human ability. This is why Jesus said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. So we have a doctor not like anyone else. He do not need medicine. He don't use medicine. He can heal you. He can change your heart. You know, Paul was like this dead tree. Paul, Apostle Paul. He was like this dead tree full of cracks. Circles. Hatred. He hated the Christians. He want to kill the Christians. The Christians are bad. The Christians are false. The Christians are following the wrong. He was judging. He never tried to understand the mind of the Christians. He was just judging them. And then the Lord, he healed his heart. And from someone, he is a dead tree, full of cracks, poison, turned him the opposite. But this is not a job you can do yourself. This is a job when a person, he knock at the door, the door will be open. The Lord, he says, knock and I will open for you. Always do your best as a human being, but don't depend on you as a human being to do things. Because sometimes, the most wise person between us, he might do the most foolish thing. Why? Because he became so confident. He's wise. All my life I'm successful. All my life I'm very nice or good in thinking. Why I will be stupid today? Always, always, There is a healing. Sometimes we can even help somebody for healing, but we don't heal him. We help. When we see somebody, he have problem. I receive tons of emails and etc. And I deal with people every day. Sometimes people they are angry from me. Like today, there's a person he is upset from me because I said uh, Alexander the Great he was a bisexual. He want me to make a video say, no, don't say that. <laughs> and then uh, he gets so upset and he start calling me names. I always, you know, answer people. You know, I said, listen, when you uh, ask me in the, and you know, I mean, the argument is very funny. And then he threatened me or he, he not threatened me. He said, I even support you in Patreon. You know, and I am trying to understand the mind of this person, why he is so angry. I mean, who is Alexander the Great for you? Is your dad, your uncle, your son? What, what's exactly the pain? And then when he mentioned that he is uh, uh, even supporting me in Patreon, I said, I don't look at people how, like what they donate. This guy, he made a drama, like there's two lines about his donation. I even support you in Patreon, in YouTube, etc. I went to Patreon and I found that his lifetime support was $2. And then I said to myself, what is in his mind? 
What his expectation from me? He think because he gave me two dollars donation, I will go and make a YouTube to change what I said. I'm not a historian, but I did read about it. It might be true. It might be wrong. But why you are so upset? Something hit the nerve. Something hurt inside him. Me, myself, I cannot understand because I have to go to his childhood. I have to go and see what happened to him in his lifetime. There is something, something not right to make a person trigger like that. How you explain the Trinity for those who don't understand it? Well, let us finish here. I mean, how you can explain the Trinity for someone who don't understand it? If you don't understand it, which means, why you don't understand it? Because you decide not to understand. Trinity is God is one. Can God become three in the same time he is one? If you say he cannot, that means he is not God. So as you see, those people, they decide not to understand it. The second we say God, even though you take me away from my topic, but it's okay. The second we say God, what God mean? God mean He is Almighty. He can do as He wish. He can be as He wish. So, if you are trying to design God, well, you can go to eBay and order one fit with your design. You know, design. They can add legs for him, they can add tongues, they can add 10 fingers, 20 fingers, as you wish. So if God is almighty, can he be three and one? If you say this is impossible, that means it's impossible for him to be God. So why do they not understand? Because they don't even understand the concept of God. It's not up to you. If there is somebody who is a Hindu, and he believes, like the Hindus, uh, according to Sadhguru, he said, Hindus, they have 35 million gods. Is that why I will reject Hinduism? No. This is another reason, because what if what if they're true, there's 35 million gods? What if it's true? So it's not the number. <laughs> what if there is, you know, can you decide how many there are? If it's one or two or five or seven? You cannot. So it's a very silly argument when a person, he say, how you can explain i'm not I'm, I'm not insulting you by the way i'm just saying that those people who say to you that they decide not even to listen and not to understand what god mean can god be a man and god in the same time what is god and god he can do whatever he wish this is what god mean i'm not god can i be a bird no i cannot can I fly? No, I cannot. Can I have a son without a wife or a, or, or a girlfriend? No, I cannot, like Allah. So, people, human being is very silly. And he. this is what exactly what we said about mind. Those people in their mind, they are questioning God, but they don't have knowledge of what God is. So, how do you question, question what God can be when you don't even understand what God is. And this is why we say, don't waste your time with the foolish ones. Foolish ones will take you nowhere. Do you understand me? I hope so. Uh, <clears throat> Anyone have a question about the topic? Always, always, argument with the fool is a wrong argument. You will lose anyway. He's a fool.
Anyone have a question? <coughs> I am guilty of thinking, I don't know what does that mean, if thinking make you guilty, that's mean you are guilty all the time. How might you try to understand the mind of someone with a trauma? But you do not need to understand a person have a trauma because already have a trauma. So you need to understand that he's a trauma first. I mean, if you are saying he have a trauma, this person have a trauma. So now we know that this person, he is suffering from a problem. So we need to understand the problem first, which you call it trauma, before we look for his mind. That's what we said from the beginning. We have to go to the dark spots in your childhood you know, when we grow, we don't grow into a second, like your mom, she gave birth to you, and then later, you know, that second day you are, in the morning, you are 30 years old. So all those circles is inside you, and there's a cracks, and there's wounds. So if, if a person is so clear he has such a thing, then this person, he need help to understand what's causing this. Like what happened to him when he was a child or youth or something? Uh, if there is any question? Please stay with us on the topic, if you don't mind. We don't want to talk about Quran now, please. We are we have a topic. If you have a question about the topic, feel free. As you see, our title has nothing to do with Islam today. You want to stay clean. We will not talk about anyone today. We will talk only about the topic. Focus with me, please. I don't know. People asking me what the topic. Don't you see the title? <laughs> like you were, you were walking in the street and then you fall into the sewage. You do not know where you are now. And then you end here? Don't people know how to read, how to write? Are you like Muhammad? Don't you see the title? It's like going to a restaurant that says hamburger restaurant. Burger King. And you say to them, what is the meal for today? It says Burger King. The name of the restaurant, Burger King. Be nice to people. I'm being nice. This is the nicest I can be. What do you think of a Chris Islam? There is no such a thing. Yeah, this is just uh, the foolishness of a human being, the, the fraud. As we said, from their fruit, from their fruit, you shall know them. Why around people around me always thinks I'm stupid? I don't understand. Uh, Jenny, I don't know. I mean, why you are saying that? 
but <clears throat> I will give you an example just to make you feel positive of yourself I don't know you I never met you I never spoke to you however how many times a day you people hear Muslims saying Christian Prince is a liar how many times a day I mean all Muslim videos saying the same thing right but it doesn't mean I am there are people around me so it's not people who describe you the question is how you describe yourself do you think you are stupid do you agree with them did you do stupid things People, they can say as they wish. People, they can lie to you. People, they can say you are beautiful when you are not. I'm not insulting you, by the way. I don't know how you look like. People, they might say you are ugly when you are beautiful. So, I'm not going to take what people say about me. I know myself. I know my fruits. There's many people they are angry from me, maybe jealous from me. They try to frame me, they try to make gossip about me. Shall I care? I will care only if you are doing something stupid and then you need to fix it. You need to see if you are doing something really stupid then you try to fix what's wrong. Otherwise, the rest is not important. All right. Any other question? It's not what people think about me make me good or bad. It's my fruits. My what? My fruits. Because God is understanding, can people who commit suicide go to heaven? My friend, I, I will not be like uh, like the Muslims now who tell you who goes to heaven, who don't. The key of heaven is in the hand of God. It's not for me to tell you where somebody commits suicide, he will go. However, our Lord, the Messiah, is merciful, is loving. Maybe somebody, I mean, somebody commits suicide, obviously he is going through a lot of things, horrible things. Is somebody need help, not somebody need judgment. So what God will do to such a person, I'm not going to judge a person or do anything. I believe it's a crazy act, right? But I cannot really judge the, the person. I do not know what made him or her do that. I say and I advise people not to play God. It's not a Christian who can tell you, a Christian man or a woman can tell you who goes to heaven, who don't. That is the Lord decision. However, I believe it's a bigger crime it's against God to kill yourself. So you are committing a crime, big one. Why? Because it's, this is not your life. It's, it's not given to you to put a knife in yourself. You have no right to do that. He gave you a body. He gave you a soul. You give it back when time is up. It's not you who take it. So you are committing a crime, but you're expecting mercy. If you ask me, you know, if I am the judge, I will say, well, you kill yourself. You don't want to live, don't you? Why do you want to go to heaven? 
You are not a believer. You are not faithful. You did not look at me. You did not ask for hope from me. And you decide to kill yourself. Well, you are in your own. If I am the judge, I will say so. But as we know, the Lord is merciful to him. Maybe he will let them go to heaven. But I say it's a bigger crime against God. Do you think Judas, he go to heaven? You know what, what Jesus said, the one who deny me, I deny him. The one who deny me in front of the people, I will deny him in front of the Father. So Judas, he denied Jesus, and not only that, he sold Jesus. You might say he repent. He repent, right? But the crime is so big. However, as I said, our Lord is a very special person. He's very loving. I remember what he said in the cross, and maybe you remember with me. Anyone can remind me what he said to the Jews? He said, forgive them, Father. They do not know what they are doing. Is that correct? Forgive them, Father. They do not know what they are doing. Even though the Jews, they were screaming, his blood is in our hands and our children's hands. Look how rude they are. Not only our hands, they want to take it to their children's. So the Messiah is a very special person. So if you ask me, I say Judas don't deserve to go to heaven, even though he repented, even though he felt so bad, even though he did what he did after he what he did. You know, uh, there's things you cannot fix. You cannot. Like the, this, this, uh, this tree, maybe it's big, maybe it is a huge, but the cracks are there. You can grow big, but the cracks are still there. You can't even take them from inside you. And this is what happened to Judah. So I say he doesn't deserve forgiveness. In the same time, I can say, well, the Lord, he forgive even those who are screaming, enjoying killing him. So I cannot be the judge. I will leave that to the judge. What the Messiah said? The judgment over the flesh is given to him. So leave that to the Messiah. Is it okay to do piercing, uh, tattooing? Well, this is a good question, actually. Thank you for this question. You know, uh, <clears throat> The first question I ask always, if I want to do something to my body, why I want to do it? Why I want to do it? So as long as you are interested in this topic, Mr. No Stress, No Stress, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name correct. Why you want to do tattoo? What is exactly is missing in your body you're trying to fix? Can you give me the answer, please? Why a person, he want to do such a thing? What is, what is the reason? The only, the only reason I see a person he want to do a tattoo I don't know how many of you have a tattoo and you might now feel insulted. Do you want me guys to say the answer? You know me. I'm not a person who say who make sugar coating. 
I don't sugar coat. So if you want my answer, and you are a person who have a tattoo, leave. Because you will be offended. I believe, and this is my opinion, this is not only against God, there's many verses in the Bible against it. It is a sign of foolishness, emptiness, in your heart and your brain. Evil spirit swimming inside you. You are confused what to do. You do not know what you are. So you are trying to find an identity. So what you do, you start adding things to your skin. And maybe that will get the attention. Maybe I'm now cool. Maybe people will like me. Maybe I will look intimidating, maybe. Maybe I'm just a person who nobody respects, and when they see me with a lot of tattoos, will think I'm a gang. Maybe, maybe. But none of those maybe is a good reason. None of those maybes is a good reason. All of them, they are bad reasons. Even if you want to have a tattoo of a cross on your hand, why do you want to do that? Give me a reason. Did Jesus do tattoo? Did the disciple have tattoo? This is a pagan act. Foolish act. And those who do it, they do not even know the real reason behind it. They are confused. And later you will regret you try to take it off, but it's too late. A lot of people, they go and get tattoo when they go to Jerusalem. Well, they did not visit Jerusalem, then they visit the devil. <laughs> I mean, how silly. You know, I understand. I understand. I, I will tell you something. In the old days, some Christians, they used to make a tattoo across, but this is not because of a tattoo. So if their child is stolen from them one day, because the Muslims, they used to kidnap their children. The child, he will knew that he is from a Christian family. Do you understand? Not, they are not seeking tattoo. But that is something different. The Bedouin, as an example in Arabia, each tribe they used to have a tattoo, usually the two in their chin, and their face or in the forehead. Why? When they attack each other, they steal the children. So they cannot all brainwash the child and say to him, you are not from those, you are from us, so they can use him later to fight them. The child, he will have a tattoo, and he will know that he is from that tribe. Al Hayat Indonesia. The Muslims they say Revelation 1916, Jesus has a tattoo. Well, the Muslims they can understand the, the book of Revelation, but they cannot understand their revelation. And as long as they accept the book of Revelation, then they have to accept the one who sent it. And that means they accept that Jesus is God. Am I going to take what a Muslim say about the book of Revelation? I will laugh at them. I mean, who, look who is talking. The one who believed that camel urine is better than wine is going to explain to me the, the, the book of Revelation. <laughs> Don't take consulting from those who drink urine. If they have a brain, they will not even drink it. Any question? And you know, when you add a tattoo, like, are you going to stop with one? And then you add two, three, four, and then your body will become like a newspaper. And even some people, they look scary. Literally scary. Horrible. And not only that, there are some people that do body modification. Have you round off our topic? Yes. I ask who have a questions. Nobody. I told you what I want to say.
If you have a question, ask. I finish my topic and I ask whoever questions. Uh, do you think we can know somebody if we know their hobbies? <laughs> okay, the truth. Thank you very much. Okay. Let us say there's somebody who likes fishing. Does that mean he is Peter? <laughs> You know, do you think that we can get to know someone if we know their hobbies and the way that they dress apart from their fruits? Don't you know that the wolves dress as a sheep? We never heard that in the Bible. Don't you know that a priest, he can be evil like the devil? What a dress have to do with this and what hobby have to do with knowing Especially if it's something new, like normal, average hobby. Those are the last things that will make you know a person. Yeah, maybe we should change the verse from from their fruit you shall know them to the from their hobbies you shall know them. <laughs> now, my friend, this is the last thing to know a person. I mean, at unless it is like something a bad hobby, you know, like something weird, you know, like uh, express something wrong in the person in the behavior, uh, then I can say maybe. But uh, usually, hobby is something everybody do. I mean, like uh, football, basketball. Uh, Fishing, hunting, etc. I am Aramaic. As a Christian, we are proud of you. No, my friend, don't be proud of me. I'm nobody. They have only one person you can be proud of. That is our Lord, the Messiah. All right. Pray for my father. He is suffering from stroke and is still in the coma. Well, my friend, I'm I'm so uh, you know uh, uh, sad for your father. That uh, sad for this news. For sure, it's not a pleasant news. But you need always to be careful that we are born. I hope that will not happen. We are born to what? Anyone knows? Do you know when what when the Messiah there was there's a funeral was going through? And I'm not saying your father would die, but it might happen. What the Lord he said, let the dead bury the dead. The dead here is the one who is dead in the spirit, the one who is not following Jesus. So the most important question is: is your dad a believer? If he is, he will never be dead. Jesus said, whoever believe in me and die will live. So we pray to the Lord, give your prayer to the Lord, have your hope in, on him. And the most important is, I hope that your father is a true believer in Christ for always then he will live. Don't face your problems alone. Christ is always there for you. Uh, what do you think about God hate the sin, not the sinner? You know, there is a, there is a phrase, they need uh, like a surgery. My screen is full of text. Screen, let us, let us clean the screen. Well, give me a second.
So our friend here is saying, God hate the sin, not the sinner. You see, I can take something out of context and I make a story of it. But if I understand the context carefully, I will agree for a degree. Jesus said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. And who is the sick? The sick is the sinner. And the Bible says, for God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. All right. And the Bible says too, that all of us, including you and me, we are sinners. So do Jesus hate me? No. When I commit sin, somehow I hate myself. Why? Because I'm not seeking the eternal life for the Lord. So this statement here is not wrong. But doesn't mean it's a license for sin. If we want to use it for license for sin, oh God, he hates sin, not the sinner. That is the wrong direction. You know, like when we say God, he forgive. And then I say, okay, well, you know, God forgive anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let us do this and let us do that. And, you know, uh, we go like the Muslims, you know, the Muslims, Muhammad, he told them, if you kiss the black stone, Allah erase your sin. If you fast the, uh, the day of Ashura, Allah erase all your sin for the previous sin, brief previous year and the year to come. So the Bible is not a book encourage sin. And we as a Christians, when we make a statement like this, it's just to express that we are not here to judge you as a person. We are here to help you. So we are going to talk about sin, but we are not here to talk about the sinner. Our enemy is sin, it's not you. The enemy of God is sin, but it's not you, even though you are the sinner. However, if you try your best to justify your sin, then you got this sentence wrong. I hope I answered you. Anyone else? He posed a question I did not see. I see some people making comment about this guy, Andrew Tete. I mean, why he's so important? This guy is a pimp. <laughs> I mean, how do you know how many people he destroyed their life? How many women he abused them? I mean, and why why is why is it important? What 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 what's happening to this earth? You see, if somebody was like a decent man, amazing man, and he became a Muslim, I would say, okay, well. Yeah, I mean, we, we lost a good man. But this guy never was a Christian. And he's a pimp. And he says about it. And all the clothes until now he's wearing, all the money, all the car he drive, all the big villas he have, is from the sweat of hookers. You know, always there's something called money laundry. What money laundry? You take, you make money from something evil. And then you try to make it clean your money is evil money this guy is looking for a washing machine and Islam fit with him now he is more dirty not more clean because Islam even allow prostitution two Iranian mullahs send message to Iranian uh, protesters that if Islamic government drowned we will make Iran deprise and ruin them and dance in our street. Well, my friend, I believe nothing will happen in Iran anyway, for many reasons. 
You see, uh, in order for things to change, there is somebody who is able to change. People who go in the street, they cannot change it, even if they are by millions. Why? Those people, they are ruling the country for, I think, 43 years. They control the whole armed forces, massive armed forces. So change will never happen. Joe Biden, because he is desperate to decrease the price of oil, and that's why from the beginning his plan is we sign an agreement with Iran and they start selling their oils and then, well, you know, bingo, the price of oil will go down. This person is desperate to sign an agreement with them. And this is what the hope was of the Iranian regime. But things did not go in the direction they wanted. However, change will never happen in Iran. The only way for change to happen in Iran, if the armed forces took side with the people. And I see that somehow is impossible because the armed forces of Iran, the army is not really armed forces in Iran. Army is just uh, nothing. They don't have power. The armed forces is the the guards, the revolutionary guard. Those are the one who have the heavy duty arms. And as long those people are there, nothing will change. So don't waste your time. You're welcome, Steve. Uh, why would you punish for sin in a fairy torment or purgatory, a fast doctrine, if your sin are paid for by death? I don't know what Maria is trying to say. You know, when we say your sin is paid by, you know, paid for by Jesus, the forgiveness, it doesn't mean that you can go and uh, live like a goat and enjoy sin. That is not what the Bible says. And this is what I always warn Christians when they say things, you are giving wrong idea and the foolish ones, they will grab the wrong ideas. So here we have saying, well, why would you be punished for sin if Jesus paid for your sin? Uh, you, you see, no, you will pay for your sin. Jesus, when we say Jesus, he paid for your sin, that if you repent and ask Jesus for forgiveness from your heart, and you don't do it again, and again, and again. When we say that Jesus, he paid for our sin, doesn't mean we have a license for sin. Jesus said, not everyone say to me, Lord, Lord, which means God, God. He will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So Jesus make it clear that you have no license for sin. Uh, we see here like questions going left and right. Somebody is asking about masturbation. Well, this is a very, <laughs> this is a very uh, uh, sensitive topic. And whatever you say, uh, people will agree or disagree. However, the Bible says, don't waste your seed. Don't waste your seed, which means, you know, try your best to go and get married. Don't waste your seed. Uh, and, you know, I cannot tell you what to do about it. But if you think about a woman, she is not yours. You are committing sin. As simple as that. So it doesn't mean if the Bible did not mention the word, that the word is not, or the topic is not really there. Sin is sin, doesn't matter what it is.
Any other question? Uh, somebody saying, Jesus was Balakat of Lord Krishna. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I heard that Jesus, when he entered Jerusalem, he was riding an elephant. <laughs> you know, when, when we say uh, some people, they suffer from mental illness and they have a pain and their pain is Jesus here. They hate Jesus. I mean, uh, what Jesus? Did? So Jesus now, he is Bahakat of Lord Krishna. Really? I heard that Jesus, he used to have like a red dot in his forehead too. And not only that, there's a cow next to him. Not only that, I heard that he was born in a cradle, man. You know, when I say stupidity is amazing, I mean it for a reason. And I hope you know what I'm saying. Stupidity is amazing. Prove me wrong. Uh, does a Christian prince see this message? I saw nothing, my friend. You know, you remind me of somebody. He went to his friend. And uh, he told him, I want to tell you something, but please promise me you will not tell anyone. I said, sure, sure. He said, you promise? He said, oh, what, why you are making it so serious? He said, because it's serious. I, what I will tell you, I want you to promise me that you don't tell anyone. The other guy said to him, I promise you, whatever you say to me, as if I heard nothing. The first guy was so happy. So he said to him, can I borrow from you $10,000? The other guy, he said to him, as I said, I heard nothing. Lord have mercy. What do you think about evolution theory? What is a theory? Everybody have his own theory. I have a friend, he thinks that his mother-in-law, she was a monkey. And why? Because she is jumping all over the place, according to him. Theory. I mean, they call it theory, so what? Why I have to have a point of it when it's a theory? People, they say silly stuff, you know. When somebody want to come to me, he says he used to be a cell and he became etc. and etc. Okay. Don't waste your time with those people. Uh, anything else? <clears throat> Any dictionary in Aramaic will give you a definition of as our mean foolish. Actually, I learned uh, uh, this in, from somebody, he is a scientist uh, in the Aramaic language, in the ancient Aramaic, Aramaic language. Uh, and uh, he mentioned many things in the Quran, actually, not only this. Uh, but for me, myself, I'm not a person who speaks the ancient Aramaic language. You see, there's Aramaic language, which is very ancient. And there's a modern, I think there's two modern Aramaic la language. And there's a very, very ancient so he is a, like I say, a scholar, big deal. Uh, Christian Prince Limada, Lisa Hunaka, Turkid Alami, Hos of Arabian, a Thoro and Mojuda, Thoro, Thora, ah, Fi Iran. Harris, Allah, Hijab. 
Our friend here is asking in Arabic why there is no nobody is focusing in the uh, Arab countries about the revolution happening in Iran. Is that because the revolution because of a hijab? Uh, you know, you know, in Arabic we have a statement or a say it says, uh, the hair which broke the back of the camel. So the camel he keep carrying, keep carrying, and you know, the owner of the camel keep putting stuff in the top of the camel. The camel is very big, strong, can carry like maybe 500 kilos. But then there's little, little, little tiny hair fail on the camel and the camel cannot take it no more and he collapsed. So the hijab in Iran is the hair. The real reason is that people cannot take it no more with this Islamic regime because everything in Islam is dictatorship, not only the hijab. There's a time when a little match can make a big fire. But there's many matches before they did not make the fire. But this match make the fire because they cannot take it no more. The grass is too dry. Too dry. Now, you say that in the Arabian world they don't focus on it. They focus, but they don't mention it is because of the hijab. They try to make the, the regime, like as an example, if you watch Al Arabia TV, uh, Saudi Arabia, they always focus, they have every day tons of videos about revolution in Iran, uh, but they don't make it about the hijab, they make it about the Iranian regime is bad. That's all. Uh, but all of them are the same. They just use it for a political reason. All right. Are you willing to debate other Muslims? who are worse than Andrew Tate, as least with him, will answer your question. I never say no to debate any Muslim. Have, guys, have I ever, I mean, even the stupid, uh, this, what his name? Uh, Ultimate Fart. I took uh, like a thousand calls from him. And later, because he just said, uh, he claimed that he said the MF word to my mother. Uh, I promise I will never have him again speaking to me. But we took thousands of time call from him. Anyway, I don't know even who's going to call me. I open my sky, I say anyone call me. So I'm always open to all kinds of Muslims, even the pimp you mentioned, no problem. I will be happy actually to have him here. That would be good. Bring him. I have a trouble with atheist. Question, can God create rock so heavy that he cannot hold it himself <laughs> okay let us put the question on the screen so our friend here an atheist they ask him such a smart question listen carefully I have a trouble with atheist questioning questions. Can God create rock so heavy that he cannot hold it himself? Can God remove himself from existence? If God is almighty, can he be evil? Hmm. Well, my friend, about creating a rock, God cannot move. Uh, that is really weird. Uh, but I can prove it to them easy. Isn't it God he created that person who is obviously have a brain of a rock and God is not moving him? Here we go, the rock is there. So here we go, we made them win. Those are silly, stupid questions. God created a rock he cannot carry. You know, if we go with the logic of those uh, atheists, if the God is not the one who created the rock, who is the one who created the rock? Can you give me the answer? I will give you a million here. Then we go to the second question. Can God remove himself from existence? Why you want to do that? 
somebody told him that he lived in San Francisco and he is so desperate or in Philadelphia stupid people what, what the heck is that what what kind of a question this question is what about you ask ask God if he can kill his mother-in-law can Joe Biden remove himself you know he can't even walk he must be God then uh, you know those are silly people you know don't don't waste your time with them if God is Almighty can he be evil will depend what evil is for you as an example those atheists they do abortion killing babies and they are the good ones yeah they are not evil so evil in the eye of who in the eye of an atheist if we ask an atheist is it evil to have sex with your mother if you say yes according to who to your book religion God is it evil to have sex with the children if you say yes according to who are you trying to be Christian now so you know those people they say silly stuff and you should always give them back what they deserve never be polite for they are not when you are polite with those people by the way they think you are weak how did God protect the children of Adam from inbreeding defect my friend who said that God he did I can send you my picture <laughs> uh, you know if you are the first generation and then second generation and then you know the number is increasing fast and I believe that God he can control um, he's in control all the time which means when we read in the Bible we will see that when people are with God they have extra protection but diseases are there germs bacteria are there death is in every corner when those people are not with God diseases all over them the black death is very famous take the nation so uh, I believe like if you want to go out talk about science in order to get the defect the defect have to be uh, not from the first and second and third generations it have to happen if you keep taking your cousin your cousin your cousin your cousin like you know I mean you uh, like someone from your blood really but then if the blood is a changing always there is some change in the blood and you might say to yourself well uh, you know I mean uh, if we are all from the same father or the same mother we have obviously the same blood yeah that will not change too much but in reality there's always a change the DNA change you see if there is two brothers and they are almost let us say born from one mother there is a some different in the DNA it's not the same so always there is a different in the creation God he gave you know gave Adam and Eve the ability of recreate recreate reproduce and as long God he gave the permission the permission will work you might say uh, that will cause defect well nowhere is report that any of the children they have a defect and I believe that all bad diseases and bad things horrible things happen to us as a human they are increased and increasing because of our sin the more we are away from God the more God is away from us and then we are in our own uh,
But if you ask me at the same time, I believe all the human beings, they have a defect, even the healthy one. So many Christian religion, but one Bible. There is nothing called the Christian religion. There is Christ. If people disagree, that is very normal. But all of us, we agree about Christ. And as long as we agree about Christ, that he is our Lord, the Christians are saved. If you believe that Christ is an angel, or he is a prophet, you don't believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, then obviously this is a different religion. But if you are a person who believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the crucifixion of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, the coming back of Jesus, you believe in the four Gospels, you are a Christian. It doesn't matter what the name of the church you call it. That is not a new religion. That is your false understanding. You know, sometimes our ignorant is our philosophers. So what people do, they come to you with their philosophy. They don't even understand what religion means. I don't blame you. Maybe you heard from some Christians say, oh, this church isn't a Christian, this church isn't a Christian. Christianity is not a church. Christianity is a Christ. There is one Christ. And whoever believes in him, he will live. I have a brother, he told me that the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they have different will. Well, your brother is an idiot, with my respect to you. Isn't it Jesus, he said, let your will, let your will be done? <laughs> let your will be done. Isn't it Jesus who said, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my Father, but the one who do his will? <laughs> So, you know, your brother, obviously, he got his education from a mule university, not from a Christian perspective. Sorry if I sound like rude to you. I'm not. I'm just, I'm, I'm, everybody knows. Maybe I don't know. Some people, they might be here for the first time. I don't sugarcoat my words. So forgive me if I sound like I don't mean to insult you. Do you have any specific verse in the Bible that you need, uh, you read the most, uh, your favorite verse? Well, I can say there's a favorite verse for me, the bent in my, uh, the moment. As an example, uh, in, in order sometime to understand how Jesus is so amazing, I read when Jesus says, I am from above, and you are from below. But if you think about it, Jesus sounds like he's insulting me. He's saying to me, you are from below. But I love it. Because that verse explained to myself why we are really from below. It explained to myself and to others our state, where we are, and who we are. So, depend in what you are thinking of. Always there is a favorite verse because all the words of Jesus is favorite. And they are amazing. Oh. Uh, Well, seven days Adventists, they have many silly stuff. You can go and read what they think about Jesus and the angel, you know. They are, the seven day Adventists are not Christians. You know, a long time ago, not long time ago, actually, I thought, I did not know really all kind of those, uh, uh, they are new to me, you know, because I don't encounter them. But then I found that uh, the, the Adventists, they have a lot of wrong teaching. Uh, even though, like, I mean, people, they can be good there. They can be good people there, 
but obviously they have way far from uh, the Bible teaching. So for me, the Seventh Day Adventists are a cult. So I say to you, stay away from them. They aren't Christians. You can right now go and search on Google and see the difference between Seventh Day Adventists and what Christianity teach. Uh, oh, eating meat is the last thing to worry about. I don't eat meat myself. I eat only shir kebab, uh, beef, lamb, uh, tuna, fish, eggs, and I believe I am a vegetarian. You know, actually, uh, even when somebody he claimed to be a vegetarian, he is just like a person fooling himself, because a vegetarian is somebody eat vegetables, correct? But vegetables are not vegetarian. <laughs> vegetables, they eat meat. Don't you know? If you don't believe me, bury a chicken under a tree or a flower or tomato and see how the chicken, how, how the tomato will be so happy. So the vegetation you eat is not vegetarian. They themselves, they are, they like eat, they love, they love meat. So you are fooling yourself like you are eating tomato, but in fact the tomato is eating meat. It's kind of foolishness. So here we have a question. The son prayed to the father why, and why Jesus the son can do things that the father can while they are both uh, God is one. I don't know what are you talking about the son cannot do. Isn't it Jesus he said, my, fa the, my father work and the same I do, the same as the son he do the work. And about Jesus praying to the Father, well, he's the Father. You know, in the old language, the word pray, uh, like uh, if you go in dictionary, you will see, I pray, you will be fine. I pray you will uh, think of me. I pray that you will come back. Uh, there's a prayer come as a prayer, like making supplication. And a prayer is like a close uh, conversation in Arabic no in Arabic like the word salah is only mean prayer so you, they are translating here the word prayer in in, uh, in the Bible as the word pray in English but the fact all the words and the conversation between the Messiah and the Father is a prayer why for it is holy a holy spoken words are prayer a holy spoken words are prayer. So for the Messiah is holy, the Father is holy, every conversation between them is a prayer. And this is why when the Messiah he speak, he says, My Father. So people they focus on the word prayer, but they don't focus that Jesus says, I am the only way. Nobody knows the Father but the Son. Uh, if you find aliens like we look like today we have a questions all over the place now we arrive to the aliens <laughs> hey Thomas how are you doing my friend uh, aliens all right let's see what the question is let us take a screenshot and put it in the screen you know, there's one thing about me when I said to go live, like I just remember that my my knee is I'm, I'm bending my knee, my legs all this time. Can you believe it? And now I just remember to relax it. I'm, they they hurt. So like, uh, uh, anyway, because I'm very passionate about what I do. Uh, so he's saying, Thomas saying, if we find aliens, presuming they exist. Does the law apply to them if they are conscious? Do we have a duty to evangelize to them? Well, I don't know. I believe that aliens are exist. Just open your TV, watch the CNN, and you will see all kinds of aliens. They are coming from different galaxies. 
They do not know their gender. They claim that the price of gas is low and there's no inflation and there's no drugs. And they are alien. Uh, so, you know, if there is aliens or not, I believe that if there exists, God created them. And obviously, uh, he deal with them the way he wish. Is it possible that God, he have different people, different place? Maybe. Why not? Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but I believe that God never created anything to leave it without his care. His, uh, uh, that even the, 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 even the nature have a law. Even the nature is not left by itself. So, as long as God created them, if they exist, then God, he have something for them. He have a reason to create them. But I will leave that to God. But for me, the only aliens I know for now are the Democratic Party in USA. Why Jesus, he speak to the Father as separate entity or a person if he is the one with the Father? Yeah, you know, uh, some sometimes we ask questions, not to ask questions really, we ask questions just to... Uh, uh, go around our ears like you ask a person where is your, where is your right ear so he uses his left hand to point his hand, uh, finger to it but let us put this question here let us uh, clean the screen first you know the bible speak says that uh, the 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 word described the uh, the unity of God is Echad. Echad. But Echad does not mean one, as one person. Echad means united, unity. Like the Bible says that the man, he leave his parents and he will be one with his wife. Echad. So, uh, when you try to understand why and how, look, look at the question, why does Jesus speak to the Father as a separate entity or a person because God the Father is a person and he is a person. So you are asking a question but you do not know what Christianity is. Don't you know that the Christian believe the Trinity is that God the Father is a person, God the Son is a person, God the Holy Spirit is a person. So here the question obviously is coming from somebody you do not know what Christianity is about. And when Jesus, he said, uh, he and the Father is one, it doesn't mean that he is one as a one person. That's mean that the will of the Son is the will of the Father. Why God he sent the Son? Because he saved the world. And why the Son is here to save the world? For God he loved the world, he sent the Son. Which Son? His only begotten Son. And which will is the will is done? Is the will of the Father. He is the one who sent him. So we are united in the will. We are united in the target. We are united in holiness. Yet it's one God. Well. This is why the Bible says the word logos. If you go in John chapter 1, verse number 1, the English translation says word, but the Greek one is Logos. Logos not only a word. Logos means the, the mind of God, the will of God. So, the, the mind of God, the will of God, is God. And God, mind, guide, God words, God will become a man. What do you think about tongues? I think Paul means languages. I always get confused. Yeah, you know, uh, <clears throat> obviously, uh, the Bible speak about uh, speaking in tongues, but tongues, the way I understand it too, 
is speaking in languages of others, not making noise. And I believe that the Lord, he gave his disciple the ability to speak in tongues. And they spoke in many languages. Because we don't speak to make noise, we speak to make a point. Did the Zoroastrian person serve a false god, idol? Well, they don't worship God anyway. The Zoroastrian, the Persian, they used to worship uh, the fire. Uh, they have their own philosophy, but for sure they are not worshiping any god, which can be considered or exist. Uh, uh, Jude is asking why Jesus asked the Father to forgive them because obviously the Father will be so angry from the crime they just committed they just killing his son so uh, by when Jesus asked the Father Forgive them, Father, they do not know what they are doing. He is giving his word, his say, that I forgive them. Can you please forgive them? The Father, you know, when we say the Father, Father mean authority. Father mean, uh, uh, like, my Father is higher than me. Why Jesus, he called the Father the Father, and he called himself the Son? For he is born of the Father. So everything he have is given to him from the Father. So even forgiveness is from the Father, which is given to Jesus. He gave him the judge, judgment over the flesh. So the Messiah, he loved those people. He don't want the anger of the Father to come upon them. He said, forgive them, Father, they don't know what they are doing. And that means two things. Jesus, he loved them. And he forgive them but still uh, the crime is happening is done but forgiveness is a clear sign of God you know we notice that everything happened uh, is coming for forgiveness like Jesus he knew he would be killed it's not a surprise uh, for sure the father he knew the whole mission of Jesus about he is coming he will be killed so there's no surprise but in the cross Jesus he is showing us love and mercy same time the Christians cannot go and seek revenge imagine if Jesus did not say forgive them father they don't know what they are doing and the Jews they were shouting his blood on us and our children's the Christians they might lose their mind and go and seek revenge from those who did such an act. So Jesus, he prevented many evil things to be done in his name. Don't seek revenge, I forgive them. Who are you not to forgive? And don't make excuse that I did not ask the Father to forgive them, I did. You know, the Messiah, as he said, he is from above and you are from below. And because you are from below, you see his words from below. You don't want to see it from above. You are just trying to question, not to understand. Correct, correct people? When I, you know, uh, like, you know, sometimes we act like a silly person. Like, let us say I have... Uh, Einstein or Newton or the one who created electricity and I ask him a question about how the battery work I mean this is silly but this is my knowledge this is my limit you know I'm little he's he is genius he is a scientist but because I'm looking from below my question is below so in order to think about God and how God he act and how God he thinks. Shouldn't you ask yourself first, 
why even Jesus is there? Why he is on the cross? But isn't it Jesus, a day before he said that you will deny me and you will deny me and you deny me and this person he will deny me? Isn't it Jesus, he said it clearly, what will happen to him exactly? So if you're questioning his love, that means you do not know what Jesus is about and why he came for. If you're questioning why he's asking for forgiveness, why he don't forgive him, who said he did not? When he said, forgive them, Father, that means he forgave them already. However, the Messiah always, his will, is not against the will of the Father. So he don't make his own will independent. He say, Father, forgive them. How can a Christian react to blasphemy or a blasphemous act? <clears throat> you do not need to react. <laughs> Don't worry about it. The one who did it, he will go to hell. As simple as that. You see, uh, if I have a family member, if and he worships Satan. Not only he do blasphemy against God, he worship literally Satan. I will not even cry for him if he go to hell. Why? Will he choose to go to hell? Why I will cry for him? I will never cry to any person he we he go to hell. What was the real name of Jesus? Well, by birth, it is Yeshua. Emmanuel is God with us. God with us. If Old Testament opposes the death penalty, how did the Christian came not to have such a same law? You see, in the Old Testament, the apostasy is not about apostasy from religion only. It is about betraying the Jews. The Jews are the only nation. They are religion and ethnic in the same time. So apostasy is somebody joining the enemy. And usually what the Jews, they do, they join their enemy by marrying from their women, worshiping their God, and they will be part of their army and their children they will be part of the children of the army of the enemy. So the apostasy was not meant just for uh, the purpose of, uh, you know, the change in the religion. It was for betraying. It is to preserve. It's like somebody he betray. You know, not long time ago, a person, his name is al waqidi I forget his name, Waqidi, I think. He went to Yemen and he joined the terrorists in Yemen and he is an American. What the American did? They killed him. A drone hit. He's an American citizen. So, uh, when you join the enemy, literally an enemy, not just an enemy of God, you know, like metaphorically. No, no, literally an enemy. An enemy, they have a real war, long war with them. You are one of them. And the Jews, they did a lot of crimes against God by worshiping other God. That's why many times they were punished. <clears throat> However, you know, uh, uh, apostasy, uh, when a Christian person, he leave a Christianity, uh, Christians are from endless number of ethnic. Christianity is not an ethnic group. The Jews are ethnic. If you leave Judaism, you are not a Jew. You are not from their ethnic anymore. Okay, how we can uh, con con connect with the Old Testament, 
Jesus says he came to perfect the law, not to destroy it. Yeah, he was speaking to the Jews. Remember, the Jews, they were trying to question the behavior of Jesus. Like, as an example, Jesus, he do miracles in Saturday, in the Sabbath. So the law did not change. Sabbath is Sabbath. Jesus never said, don't do Sabbath. But Jesus, he said to the same people who follow the Sabbath, Sabbath was made for the man, not the man was made for Sabbath. So Jesus, he is making perfect in understanding, in the practice, the same as when they chase the women to stone her. Where is the man? And all of them, they are sinners. They are just a bunch of hypocrites. Why Jesus is seated in the right side of God? Well, Jesus is not really seated in the right side of God. He is seated in the right side of the Father. And by saying he just sat in the right side, that's mean he is in the throne. He is just sitting next to the Father. However, your God, he is busy seated in the top of eight goats. And according to the Muslims, Allah was so heavy to the point that goats could not carry him. And not only that, what if I show you that Muhammad, he will sit on the throne of Allah? <laughs> you know, the Muslims, they are like somebody, he throw arrows and we collect the arrows and we throw them back. And now he will change the topic, by the way. <laughs> And your God, by the way, uh, he sat in the top of a rooster. Which one we should talk about? Uh, you know, Muslims, because they are full of hatred against Jesus and Christianity, they ask questions. Usually those questions, they work with others. But with me, you know that I know anything you say to me, I can all use it against you. In two seconds. Oh. Uh. And now he was saying, I don't believe in those stories, CP. I don't accept those stories, CP. It doesn't say that, CP. Here we go. Let me show you the hadith. The Muslim, when they explain the Quran, saying uh, that Allah will, will give Muhammad uh, a high leveled, high chair or location. How the Muslim, they explain it? Musab, he says that the Prophet Allah will make him sit over his throne and he will see all the creatures of Allah in the day of judgment. Uh, let us see, here we go. Translate, Google translation. So what happened now? Your God, Allah, he did give his chair to Muhammad. Hmm? And if you speak Arabic, I can show it to you in Arabic. You are just a foolish person like your prophet. 
عن عبد الله بن سلام قال إذا كان يوم القيامة جاء بنبيكم صلى الله عليه وسلم على كر... بين يدي الله على كرسي فقلت يا أبا مسعود إذا كان على كرسي فليس هو معه He can read the rest of the hadith So your God Muhammad is the one who will sit on the chair of Allah But the Muslims I'm sure this guy, he never heard of the Sayyid before, but they are busy with Jesus where he's sitting. Uh, money highest, you disagree with me? No problem, you can disagree. But for me, I believe that everything God he do, he do it for a reason. So speaking in tongues, tongues mean speaking languages, not speaking, not not uh, not making a sound of. Uh... Yeah, he lived like a chicken. He already left Islam. Ah, oh, okay. Sorry, I thought I thought he's a Muslim. All right, my mistake. You know, if I sit next to the Father, how higher I can go? Should I move him to? <laughs> next to him. Next to him. I mean, can you go higher? There's a shelf higher? Does, uh, uh, does the Father only forgive sin? Uh, you know, uh, Jesus said that he'd been given the power over all the flesh. So all the judgment of mankind will be to, for Jesus. When Jesus, he asked the Father, when he was on the cross, forgive them, Father. If you remember that when when the Messiah crucified and he, uh, you know, on the cross, uh, the sky went dark. The sky went totally dark, right? So obviously, there's someone is angry. Who is the one is angry? Is the Father. So forgive them, Father, which means now, not about Judgment Day. Because Judgment Day, the judge will be Jesus anyway. Now, Father, don't punish them for what they did. This is not about forgiveness later. All the judgment belong to Jesus. For God the Father, he gave God the Son the power over the judgment over all the flesh of mankind. Shalom, my friend. Anyway, guys, I think we are done with the topic. Um, did, did we have a good time with our topic today? If you like us to come with the same topic, like, you know, uh, speaking about things that have nothing to do with the garbage of Muhammad, etc., we can from time to time. Uh, uh, CP advice to overcome a Christian struggle with sin and keep failing you know my friend uh, the question is why we keep failing you know what I mean like uh, I will give you an example that have nothing to do with sin if I drink milk if I drink milk I will have acid, but this is me. I will have acid in my throat. I don't feel really comfortable at all for drinking milk. I eat yogurt, I'm fine. All right. So now I learned about my body. I learned about my body, about my physical body. So I avoid drinking milk. Obviously, milk is not good for me. And now this is your case. Sin is like a poison milk for you. But why you drink it again and again? Always you can fight and you can resist. The second you say, well, I'm weak, I cannot, well, then that's mean you will not fight. You will, you, you know, 
you lost the war before you start the war. You know what I mean? Have you ever seen uh, a woman, she jump over the chair because she saw a cockroach? But he's a cockroach. I mean, just just, just like a little tiny little creature. If she step on the cockroach, will be dead, will be a mashed potato. But yet she decided to jump over the chair, scared like if she, if she saw an elephant. So if you have a fear, fear is your enemy. And fear means weakness. If you are a person who believe and he have a strong belief in his heart, then you should know that you can overcome your sin, or let us say your cockroach. This cockroach is chasing you. You go from this room to that room, you find him here, there. Why? Because simply you decide to jump over the chair, but not to fight the problem. So smash the cockroach, fight the cockroach, and get rid of him. You can do it. And still you will make mistakes from time to time. All of us we do. But the second we give up, we lost. You lost. Don't let that happen to you. Even if you are the most powerful person, if you give up, you are lost. You know, I remember when I was a kid, uh, there's a guy, he's like, I don't know, I mean, he is way taller than me. He is way, he's, he's very old, I mean, way older than me. I go, I fight with him. This guy always gets scared. I beat him. He doesn't do anything. So always I thought of him as weak. But then one day, this guy, he gets so angry from me. I hurt him badly. And he pushed me and he almost he made me fly and then i noticed how strong he is so all this time i was like chasing this guy for a fight all this time i never saw his strength why because he was scared yet he is really way stronger than me he almost made me fly in the air when he pushed me. So inside you, there's a strength, but that strength will not work if you are afraid. So you are uh, five foot tall. I was three foot tall and I want to fight with you and you are way bigger than me. And obviously you can beat me easy, but because you are scared, I look like I'm the winner and you are the runner. So always there is a string inside you, you have to use it. If you don't use it, it's not there. You are always weak. Uh, <clears throat> Anyway, I mean, uh, endless, uh, questions are coming endless. And, you know, if you have a questions about the Bible, uh, I mean, you don't have to agree with me. But for me, I believe that people, they question some details, uh, like, you know, speaking in tongues, etc. Uh, I, and I, for me, I understand it in my way. Maybe you are right, maybe I'm wrong. But I believe that everything God he do as a miracle, it have to have a reason. So if I speak in tongues, those tongues should be for the sake of God. To bring people to God. Not to say things nobody understands. Again, this is my understanding. You might be right, and I might be wrong. So humbly, I share with you what I think. Uh, I think Psalm 22, Matthew 27, 46, Jesus as a pure man, 
seek forgiveness for a human. No, my friend, there's nothing that's called Jesus as a pure man. Jesus is always man and God in the same time. They are not separated. They are not two. It's one person. So don't go there. Uh, you know, when, when Jesus... Uh, When Jesus, he speak, he made it so clear. Where is the words is coming from? He made it so clear. Where is the ability is coming from? He made it so clear that me and the Father is one. So he never been two. One was a man and one was a God. He was man and God in the same time. This is why Jesus, the man, he was able to do what God can do. Why? Because God and the man was one, not two. When Jesus, he forgives sin, he was man, too. Yet he was God in the flesh. That's why he can forgive sin. The one who was talking, it was a man in the flesh. Uh... Anyway, guys, I think we have enough for today. And again, you don't have to agree with me. Uh, but I believe that the best way to understand the, the, the words of the Messiah is to live his words, not just to read them. Most of us, when we try to understand the Bible, we read, we read text, you know, we just read it. Don't read it, just live it. Imagine yourself there. You see, like, uh, when they want to make a movie, what they do? Let us say they want to make a movie about the time in the Roman. What they do? So imagine in the time of the Roman, the movie about the Roman, and then we have somebody dressed, dressed like Joe Biden. That would be laughable, right? So this is what we do sometimes. We have a long decoration. We have a long, wrong background. We have the wrong timing. Then we will have a wrong understanding because we are not living the time. We are not living the moment. We are li not living the history. We are not living the location. We are just trying to read text. But if you separate those texts from those things, you are not reaching the right place. You know, when when a, when a Bedouin man live in the desert, and he make a point of a thousand line, just describing for you grass, you ask yourself, what's wrong with this guy? Because you don't understand the moment, you don't understand the background, you don't understand the time, you don't understand how he lived, where he lived. This guy lived in the desert. Grass mean life, grass mean death. No grass, no food, animals would die. No grass, no water. So, when you try to understand anything in life, even a person, don't isolate the person from the story and don't isolate the story from the person. The person come with background and the story come with background. So don't try to imply your background on the story. Jesus sent his disciples to the world to teach. How they will teach? They will speak languages. They will not use their fingers. Anyway, I want to say thank you all. Do you have to be baptized after you've been in Christ? Sure you have. Baptism is a must. However, if a person who lives in an area, he there's nobody to do baptism for him. Um, I think you can do your own baptism, uh, maybe temporarily, just to, you know, like uh, submit yourself to the Lord. Uh, and pray to the Father to, to baptize you himself, you know. Uh, but for sure, if there is a church, you can get baptized. That will be the best thing to do. But but you will be always, uh, as a believer, required to be baptized. But if there is nobody, it's not your fault. Nobody there. There is no priest. There is no church. There is no other Christian. All right? Like as an example, the person who was on the cross next to Jesus, 
Did Jesus promise him salvation that he will be in heaven? But this person did not get baptized. But baptism is very important for a Christian. It's a must. But that person was a special case. So if your case is the same, then that case will go to you. What do you think about Messianic Jews? Depend. There's, those names can be sometimes mean something else. Messianic Jews are Christian Messianic Jews. That's all. But there's another group who they call themselves Messianic Jews. They are false. You know, like you know, you go in the Philippines, uh, you will see some Jewish rabbi trying to target the Christian Filipinos and make them believe that they are Jews. This is like you know because they are desperate for numbers. Anyway, what do you think about Messianic Jews? I told you, I went actually to their churches. I went to, you know, I did seminar in their churches. Depend, if they are Christians believing in Jesus, they are Christians. They are just Jews, or they are Christians, that's all. If they are like an organization or something else, that's, that's, uh, that's fraud. <clears throat> Uh, anyway, I want to say uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, and I hope uh, today that uh, those who have a cracks in their heart, like this tree, they have many circles and they are confused inside it. I hope that they will seek the right help, which is coming from the Lord. Never leave yourself alone. Faith is very important extremely important for healing, for rebuilding your soul, rebuilding your strength. You leave yourself alone. You are just alone. Faith is so important. If I have no faith, I have no way. It's like somebody, he lost his way because you have no faith. Nothing is mean. Life is meaningless. So, understanding the mind of a human being, this was our topic today. You can watch from the beginning and see what we what we said. And if you have a topic you like us to talk about it in the coming days, maybe. And the topic I find it interesting for people to speak of, I will be happy to talk about it. But I hope today our talk was not a waste of time and we had a good uh, uh, conversation. And uh, if you don't want uh, to be offended, don't ask me questions when the answer might not sweet you. I don't sugarcoat. I don't care if you are a person who come here for a year, 10 years. I say things as it is. Just be careful. Like the one who asked me about the tattoo. So if you don't like to hear the answer, and the answer, you know, that this guy, he, he don't sugarcoat things, then don't ask it. I want to say thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you again, have a great Sunday. Have a blessed day with the Lord. And don't forget to pray for those who need a prayer. Not only to pray for yourself, pray for the needy, pray for the poor, pray for the sick, pray for Muslims to, to see the truth, pray for our enemies to open their eyes and not to be an enemy so we can live in peace. Pray for all those people who do not understand, so may the Lord help them. Pray for yourself, pray for your soul, that you will not be a person who will be left alone. The evil is all around you. And evil is real. We pray the Lord will protect us from him, from the evil of mankind, from the evil of Satan, from the evil of the evil ones. We pray that he will never leave the weak ones, the little ones, the children. They will not be target for the beast. We pray that the one who is sick, who need healing, the Lord will touch him. We pray that women, she is suffering. For some reason, maybe a husband die, maybe she is divorced. 
Maybe she lost a child. A man suffering from the same reasons we mentioned. Suffering sometimes can be very helpful. For when we suffer, we get closer to God. But why we need to wait until we suffer so we can get close to God? What about we enjoy knowing Him before that point? Love, as the love been taught to you, be decent with your love. Be honest with your love. That's why when the Lord He says, love your enemy, that is an extreme love. And the one who is not extreme with Jesus, he do not know Jesus. Some people, they label us, they say those are Christian extremists. When a Christian is extremist, that means he is extreme peaceful, extreme loving, extreme giving, not evil, not bad. An extreme or extremist Christian, he must be a saint. Thank you, and God bless you. See you soon.